All right, welcome to a, another instant analysis from OU Insider. My name is Brandon Drum. I'm here with Brian Clinton. And uh, when you live on the edge, as we said last week, OU has been doing what Aerosmith proclaimed in their music, living on the edge. And uh, comes back to bite you. And it bit them hard today as they lose 38-33 to Kansas here in a rainy, dreary, cold Seemed like forever long game after a lightning delay, which is the first time 35 degrees and it's a light, I, you know, yeah, and it's, it was a first for a lot. I mean, I've seen it in like ice storms and stuff, but that was different. Um, so you had a 30 minute delay plus give or take about what? I think it was 58 minutes. 58 yeah. minutes on a dot delay. Uh, and then the game started back up at... 102 p.m. Um, there's a lot to talk about here. We're going to make it real quick this time, only about 15 minutes, but uh, we'll have more on the podcast. Brian. More. <laughs> Brian. I, 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 so, Andrew Rain, I was talking to him after the post game. Mm-hmm. We are doing the interview on the scrum, and he kept bringing up the word. Uh, not only discipline, but details. And I asked him, like, why is it the last two weeks? And I asked Dylan Gabriel the same thing. Mm-hmm. Andrew gave a more eloquent synopsis of why they've had issues. Yeah. He essentially said, look, I can't put my finger on it, but it's got to be fixed. It's frustrating to watch. He goes, it's frustrating for me. He goes, because I I, I try to be as detailed as possible. He said, I, I, he, he admits that he makes mistakes sure. like the rest. But when you watch the simplest things, screw them up, a false start, a uh, just not the, the game management, even up to the top, to the coaches, it was frustrating. And then when you get to Dylan Gabriel, he was super frustrated. You could tell he was frustrated not only with – his play, mm-hmm. but the play calling. Sure. You sense it. You could sense it in his answers. He was short. He was, I, I don't want to use the word direct. Yeah. Because he wasn't direct. He was anything but. It was like, yeah, we just got to get better. And I don't know. And I asked him again, like, he kept saying you got to start faster. Mm-hmm. I said, okay, so what is it with the slow starts? Why are there slow starts? Nothing, he said. I don't know. We got to start faster. We got to start working on things. We got to come out more focused. You know, okay. Well, there's a big problem right now. You're coming in here seven and zero. Oh. Yep. The playoff committee is going to rank teams next week, and, and you're lucky because you just lost to a six and two team. Now that you're seven and one, so they're probably going to be ranked. They were already close. They're like twenty eighth. Yep. So now they're probably going to be in the top twenty five. It comes off as a good loss. But it wasn't a good loss, Brian. No, it was anything but. Anything but. Anything that could go wrong in this game for Oklahoma as far as timing went, it did. Uh, it was it was just an odd game from the beginning. Um, you know, they they come out with their hair on fire after the after the rain delay, uh, run the ball extremely well. Uh, Tolly Walker's just chewing up yards left and right. Um, yep. And and then they just they magically got away with it. Uh, they got away from it. And there was just so many questionable things in this game. Um, the, not trying to not trying to squeeze some extra points out of the. It, it's it's just it's so uh, different than what we've seen from Oklahoma in the past. Not trying to squeeze points out of out of the uh, end of the first half there. Not trying to, you know, the, the, we, we hear them talk about uh, the middle eight and how important that is, and they weren't, they didn't execute. I mean, their first three drives out of out of second half were punt, punt, fumble. They huh. just, it was just, it was, it was messy, it was sloppy. And look, yes, the weather plays a factor in all of that stuff, but Kansas played in it too. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, when it comes down to execution, um, it was just a really frustrating day on both sides. And, you know, 
perhaps one of the, the concerns about this is, you mentioned this earlier uh, when we were all discussing out there, this is, this is one of those momentum killing losses. And on top of that, you're going into an Oklahoma State game in Stillwater, you know that they're going to be absolutely fired up about that game, but the injuries coming out of this game are also a concern. And so it's yeah. there's just a lot of things to, to look at. Um, you know, I, 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 I typically am excited to go back and look at a game and see what's going on, but this one was so messy. I think my, you know, I may have to buy another notebook this week <laughs> for this one. I want people to see this real quick. So this is my gibberish that I can read and nobody else. It's like a doctor when they write a prescription and only the pharmacist can read it. Brandon Scratch. Yeah, essentially this is my notes of good and bad throughout the, the, the quarters. And I don't normally do this. I normally do it on a computer, but I thought today I'm going to do a little bit different. And if you're superstitious, you're going to be looking at me going, what the hell, Jerome? <laughs> Why would you do that? You just screwed up the mojo now. That's all stupid. Um, the the first thing first, you talked about injuries. And it, everybody wants to say, well, it's better to get injured now or get your injuries in now if they're not major because you don't want them at the end of the year when things are more on the line, like Big 12 titles, all that. Well, here's my thought on it. First, got to make to the damn Correct. Big 12 title. Yep. And at this rate, I'm going to be honest, no Gentry Williams. Kanai Walker is clueless out there half the time. Yep. Clueless. They had the perfect call on that fourth and four in the fourth quarter. They're driving down, um, and they converted. They got lucky. Oh, you got lucky. They did not score, right? And they mm -hmm. missed the field goal. Yep. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. Where they got in trips yep. on the right side, the, the far side. We're in the press box. The far side, they got in trips, right? And it's the opposing side. And they run a slip, kind of a drive, and kind of a corner route type deal over there on the top. And they were supposed to switch because Kanai had outside. You had uh, Key has everything over the top and through the middle. Mm -hmm. And he had Billy Bowman inside short, right? Nope. Can I Walker follows? Yeah. Venables is past the hashes, chewing his ass out. Chewing it out. I mean, yeah, it was just getting after it. Yeah. Brutally. And can I knew he messed up, but he got lucky down here in the corner in the first half on a goal line stand where they ran a little combo route, uh, trying to confuse the cornerback, mm -hmm. confuse Kanai Walker. He chooses to sit instead of drop and let McCullough come up underneath, which McCullough comes up underneath. The backside uh, corner is wide open. Bean overthrows it. Lucky number one. Two two-point conversions on rollouts. Yep. Kanai sits, plant sits instead of following the slip route out in his space. And they got lucky because they dropped the passes both times. Right. Like, they got to find somebody else for him. You have to. It's killer. Gentry Williams is pro. I, I, Woody Washington's great. Gentry's your best corner. I'm going to say it. I think he is. He's got the highest ceiling of all of them. Uh, he's your best corner. Yeah. And with him out there, it was noticeable. Everybody wants to point to the Danny Stutzman stuff. No. Kip Lewis Kip good. Lewis was good. Yeah. Kip Lewis is good. I, I'll say you this. Jared Canning's going to be really good one day. He's on the path of Danny Stutzman. Mm -hmm. But right now, he's Danny Stutzman in 2022. He makes a lot of plays. He makes a lot of mistakes. And Danny Stutzman will tell you, yeah. that's where he was last year. Yeah. Missed tackles, missed tackles, missed tackles. Cost Oklahoma. I don't know how many times. Dropped interceptions. Like, how many mistakes can you make and just get away with it? And eventually, it finally caught up with Oklahoma. There were two of ten offensively on third down today. Um, Kansas came out, and I asked Billy Bowman about this uh, because it was a trend that I noticed. You knew, you knew that, um, you knew coming into this game that Kansas was going to have something inter interesting on the offensive side of the ball. 
and that was a wildcat today. Yeah. And lots and lots of it. And the pre-snap formations that we talked about in field vision and, and all week, you've heard it from the coaching staff, uh, Kansas uses the, the pre-snap motion and, and shifts to really confuse defenses and does a good job doing that. And they did that to Oklahoma today over and over and over again. Um, and, and, you know, at the end of the day, you can't let you can't let Devin Neal and, and Jason Bean do what they did on the on the ground. Um, but the big thing was is Kansas got the momentum early in this one, and every time Oklahoma tried to steal it back, they either had a self inflicted wound that kept them from doing so, yep. or Kansas stymied it and found a way to overcome it. Well, they went on a twenty one zero run yeah. in the second quarter, got up twenty one fourteen, essentially blew that. Um, it was twenty one seventeen, but I have, yeah. but I, I back to Kanan Walker real quick. You want to know the biggest play that he screwed up on on, on the day, outside of that one fourth down in the fourth quarter with like two minutes left or a minute thirty some excuse me a minute thirty something when then they get down there mm -hmm. like the two the drop pick. Like, no, that one didn't just hit him right in the hands. That How was... about Beans run oh, where he's over yes. there? Not even getting blocked. Yeah. No, he wasn't getting touched. Yeah. And he was just staring his wide receiver in the eyes all the way down to the goal line. Like, that That to me, and then they brought in, obviously, um, I think Josiah Wagner came in for him yeah. in the next series. You kind of got to hope Josiah Wagner, Gentry Williams on available, Josiah Wagner and Macari Vickers got to step up in a yeah. big, big way moving forward. Um, let's go to that second to last before we get out of here, the second to last drive on offense. Oklahoma gets the ball with two minutes and 29 seconds left. That was... And they're in good field position, mind you. Ethan Downs, what a dude. What a dude. Let's let's pump this dude up. Let's look at this, bro. That while guy... While you're looking that up, go I'm going to give my thoughts on that. Um, I, I have... And this, we'll talk about this probably more in depth in the in the uh, podcast. in the podcast. But I have defended Jeff Levy a lot, and I just don't have any words for for a couple of things today. Particularly that drive um, when when Ethan Downs made that interception. You could tell the Oklahoma fans on the sidelines. You, you could kind of tell with the players down there, and it even felt like with, with most of us, it, it was. There, that was it. That was the game. This God, this team just finds ways to win, and, and they they just do it. And then the play calling happens. Yes, you need to run the ball to run the to run the clock out. But you've been attacking the perimeter with the with the passing game all game long. Uh, you've had opportunities to do that, and, and just it was almost it was almost like his goal was just to alleviate their, to get rid of their timeouts. And that was, that was it. And mm -hmm. I, and I don't understand the thought process there. Of course, the, the false start doesn't help. Um, you know, they're nope. on fourth down. Obviously that's another, just, just a, another brain fart, another mistake, mental mistake yeah, that you can't overcome, but it was just a really ugly football game. Um, Execution wise, but but this is obviously one of those games where you, you can't defend the play calling either. Uh, this is this is something. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of guys going to need to take a look in the mirror this week uh, after after what we just saw, and uh, you know it's a trend now. The the film doesn't lie. You've got two weeks back to back bad games. Uh, you were able to to escape with one in Norman, and mm -hmm. you come on the road and you play like that. You're going to get beat. Um, it's just bad, bad football today. It was awful football. It was um, undetailed, undisciplined, poor clock management from the top all the way down. Like I, again, that last drive, you, you said it. I, you know, I said I was going to do this on the podcast, and I'll do it here real quick. I've been a Def, Jeff Levy defender. He's done. He's got Oklahoma in the top 15 yep. offenses back to back. Last year was not on Jeff Levy. No. Um, however, that is inexcusable. 24 seconds off the clock on the second to last drive after Ethan Downs puts you in perfect position 
and you're, you get minus two yards. And everybody wants to say, well, they decided collectively that, and, and Tom Wee said it in his post-game inter interview, collectively that he wasn't going to be able to go back in. They were going to hold him out. They didn't want to injure him more. Okay, the game's on the line. And you go with Javante Barnes. I get not, if you don't want Tawi Walker not to be in there. Gavin Sawchuk was good enough for you against UCF in crunch time. And guess what? Won the damn game for you, mind you. Yep. But he couldn't do it out here. You couldn't hand it off to 27 and see what he could do. He grew up playing in cold weather in Colorado. This was nothing. The dude averaged almost four yards a carry to start the game, and they just went, no more. We're going to start throwing in Javante Barnes. Again, running back rotation, baffling. Games man game management, baffling. They're going to Oklahoma State next week. They would love nothing more than to send OU out on a bedlam loss. The, the series be damned. OU has owned that series. OU better wake up, and they better get healthy somehow, some way. Because if they don't, this magical year after 6 and 7 last year is going to go downhill and in the toilet really, really fast. You want to know, I'm going to end with this. Um, with that game coming up, Kansas had 41 carries for 225 yards today. You know what Ollie Gordon could do with 41 carries against the team that we just watched today? It would be, it would not be pretty. Yeah. It would not be pretty. So, lastly, you brought up the third down conversion, OU 2 for 10. Did you know that OU was 45% on the season? Kansas. Fourth in the country coming into the year. Kansas was 28%. They were one of the worst third down conversion offenses in college football. And OU just, what, what were they on? Four, the they were only 414. Yeah, yeah, but they they did it in big moments. Correct. And OU did not. Correct. That's unacceptable. Anyways, we're going to talk more about this game on the upcoming OU Insider Under the Visor Post Game Podcast. We're all going to be on it. Parker, myself, Jesse, Brian. It's going to be fun. Make sure you go over there. When you find it, go go subscribe to it. When it pops up, be ready to listen. It, I, I'm going to get animated. I can already tell you. It's going to get lively on the podcast. Make sure you don't miss it. Also, go to OU Insider. Join us there. Recruiting, all that stuff. We've got it covered for you. OUinsider.com VIP. See y'all later. Thank you all so much. Oklahoma loses 38-33. They got to get this crap fixed. Heading into Bedlam, folks. Got to get it fixed. For Brian Clinton, my name is Brandon Drone. We'll see you.